tree in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. God. You can be seated. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. He is a wonderful God. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad he set us free. Amen. Amen. The good news is he's still in the business of setting people free from sin. That's right. Amen. They are not without hope as long as there is, amen, the spirit of the Lord upon this world. Praise God. And I'm thankful for his blessings today. Could we just raise our hands and thank him for the liberty and the freedom we find in Jesus Christ. I bless you today. I honor you. Thank you for your spirit, God. I praise you. We love you. Bless you. Oh,
season and also the youth Christmas party is going to be held Friday night the 18th at 7 p.m. bring a uh, gift to exchange wear an ugly sweater amen I guess you can make one up if you don't have one and last but not least invite somebody to come with you and have some good time amen praise God Nothing like being with God's people. And young people need to make connection with people. Amen. They're not worldly, not ungodly. They need to make connection to see somebody. Amen. They've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. They can live separate from the world and has not got pulled into this channel of the world is going in today. Praise God. I'm glad the Lord pulled me out. Amen. Amen. I'm glad the Lord reached down his hand. Amen. Whatever age we were, I'm glad God reached down and pulled us out. Yes, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to be ready to hear him say, Well done. Yes. Praise God for the Owens for Barnes come receive our offering. Amen.
Jesus. We praise you today, God. We bless you. So get ready to sing for us. We'll dismiss our classes this morning. Amen. I appreciate, amen, all of you being here. Welcome. God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Solomon had made an end of praying. If I say praying, pray. Pray. the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, <clears throat> and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Yes. And when he made an end of praying, notice after prayer had been completed, the fire came. Everybody say the fire. 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 Hallelujah. Let's just raise our hands one more time and ask God to help us. Shall we, God, we praise you today. We praise you today. We love you. We bless you. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Help me today. Help me today. Help me today. Help me today. I bless you, Lord Jesus. God, I bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory and honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can be seated, the Lord. Bless you. Here's something I'd like to share with you this morning concerning when the fire had failed during Solomon's uh, time here. We understand this is the dedication of the temple that they had took seven years and completed, and com to complete rather. And then the Bible said that he made an end of praying. He, he prayed. One writer said that he lifted his hands toward the heavens as he began to offer this prayer unto the Lord. This was the time he asked the Lord to be with Israel. If they would be in captivity, if they looked toward the house that was in Jerusalem, the house of God, that he would hear their prayer. And uh, we notice here, my directive is to somehow put together a man at the moment when the fire came. Is there a connection between praying and the fire falling as it was in this time? All right. We understand this is long before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But yet we would find that Solomon, when he concluded his prayer, God honored this man's prayer and honored Israel by allowing the fire to fall. It was a sign of God acceptance because when the fire failed, it consumed the sacrifice and the burnt offerings and then the glory of the Lord filled the house. Amen. Could it be that there was something about prayer that attracted the fire, the heavenly fire from God? Could it be something like a lightning rod that had been connected to a house. We understand that this lightning rod is connected for the safeguard of the house. 
these lightning rods, uh, they come in many different forms and some are hollow and some are solid and some are pointed while others are round. There's are, there are some that are just a flat strip and then there are others that even are like a bristle brush. <coughs> But the main attribute is that they got one thing in common. They have a conductive material in them. And when they establish or connect the lightning rod, it is connected to a wire that runs into the ground. And so the reasoning behind this is that when lightning strikes, it would strike something that has been elevated and that is conductive. It, it brings, it appears to bring the lightning to the rod and then it travels down into the ground safeguarding the house and the electrical system many times in the house. As I said with these different forms that the lightning rod is made of, yet there is that common material. And I want to say today that Paul makes mentions, the New Testament speaks to us about prayer in different forms. Everybody say different forms. Different forms. Believe it or not, amen, the word prayer is a broad covering. And when you begin to look at different aspects of prayer, you'll find that uh, there are many uh, different aspects, but let me just read you some things that the Apostle Paul writes concerning prayer. In Philippians 4 and 6, he said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Here it is. There are seems to be three different forms, prayer, supplication, and then thanksgiving. We find, he says in Ephesians 6.18, praying always with all prayer, supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And there we would note, no doubt, we have our own ideal concerning prayer and the different forms and aspects of prayer. Amen. Just like this lightning rod is made and looks different, different shapes and sizes, yet we find that it has that common denominator. And I want to tell you the common denominator with these aspects of prayer is that we are communicating with the Lord Himself. Right. Right. Where it's just a simple whispering of prayer in a moment of time, or it's a Amen. Our hour or two of travail and supplication and intercessory that we are giving, we will find that, that somewhere that it is just something that's reaching out and connecting us. It's not trying to bend God to our will, but it's submitting our will to God's will. All right, it's not trying to give God a big long list of wants and gifts that we desire, right. but it's trying to determine the will of God for our lives. On, man. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, we will find if we can make the connection that prayer, amen, is that uh, con, uh, conducive material. It, it conduces, it conducts uh, with the spirit and the power of God himself. Many folks wonder why the fire has seemed to have left. It may be that there's too many folks uh, have went and tried other things uh, to bring the fire down, on, yeah. but the fire is attracted to the prayer of God's right. people. Amen. Throughout the word of God, I'm going to show to you that the fire was attracted to praying people. Would it be 
an individual, whether it be two or whether it be a group, amen, uh, the fire was attracted to those that prayed. Uh, there was something about praying people and people praying and prayers uh, that draw the attention of God uh, because you would find uh, that the angel told Cornelius, uh, which was a centurion of the Italian band, a Gentile who did not have a connection uh, with the Abrahamic covenant that Israel did, yet the angel said, uh, Cornelius, uh, God sent me to tell you uh, that your prayers and your almsgiving uh, has become a memorial before God. Uh, hallelujah. You know why? Because the prayers of this man uh, attract the attention of God. Uh, it was something about it. God could not move uh, unless he moved overlooking the prayers of uh, of a Gentile man. I believe today that God, he man looks and he focuses and he's concerned with the prayers of God's people. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I'm thankful today that you and I have in our, in our being something that can attract the attention of God. Can you say amen? Yeah, yeah. Can we put our hands together and give God a praise that we can attract heaven's kitchen and the fire can fall. Amen. When people begin to pray. Oh, yes, sir. Thank God today that there are praying people. Amen. Don't be disappointed. Don't be disillusioned because the devil many times will tell us and he will try to discourage us from praying because there's not had readily answered prayers. Amen. But that's where faith steps in and says, I'm going to pray again. Hallelujah. Such was the case of Elijah when he went to the top of that mountain. But before he went to the top, the Bible said that after three quarters of a day had expired and those prophets of Baal and the prophets of Grove called upon Baal, but he didn't answer by fire. And the Bible says to us that the altar had been torn down. He man at the middle of the afternoon about the time of the sacrifice of the evening sacrifice uh, that Elijah said give me a moment boys uh, let's see what my God will do and he repaired an altar uh, and the Bible said uh, as it came to pass uh, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we still have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. God hasn't changed, amen, just because we are in the New Testament age, God didn't change from the Old Testament right. to the New Testament. Right. Right. Oh, the Word declares in old and new that God remains a constant. He remains, amen, steadfast. He does not change with the times. And he does not change with the fads. He does not change with governments and kingdoms. But thank God. He remains the same. And Elijah said, that Let it be known this day that you are God and that I am your servant. I've done all of this at thy word. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we are still the servants of God. We're still the church today. Hallelujah. And we're not doing this just by a fly by night thing, but we're doing it because is the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word of yeah. God encourages us to pray. Yeah. The word of God encourages us Amen. to sacrifice. Yeah. The word of God encourages yeah. us. Amen. 
to give and it shall be given. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel God's trying to work in our congregation from the time we started the service. Hallelujah. Come on, we need to drive the spirits of darkness. Amen. The spirits of heaviness away because God wants to answer my fire. This was not a long prayer, but he said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Yeah. He prayed just a few words. It probably wouldn't have took him more than a minute, if that, to have repeated these words. Amen. You see, that's, amen, the great mystery about prayer amen that sometimes we feel and we see an answer with just a few words a small prayer a whispered prayer and sometimes there's a moments and weeks or years and months of praying the same prayer concerning the situation but we would note here these prayers, these quickly answered prayers, amen, gives me hope for those prayers that I've been praying for for a long time. Right. It, it, it burst hope in my heart and faith in my spirit when I pray concerning certain situations that have not been given an answer. I see you'll know that there are many, many prayers in my spiritual bank account that lets me know that God has answered prayers. Amen. amen. I have a went many days without a song, but yet I do know there have been days that I have had a song, and that's why I keep walking with God when I don't have a song in those oh, days. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there are unanswered prayers, but I got many answered prayers that keeps me faithful in praying the same prayer concerning situations again. And so this man prayed and when he prayed the Bible said then, everybody say then, Amen. then the fire failed. Uh, amen. The fire of the Lord failed and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Here he was. Uh, amen. Elijah, you know, when he prayed, he prayed uh, in adverse times because Israel has strayed from God. Uh, amen. Uh, the great populace of Israel uh, had went into idolatry and Ahab and Jezebel now was the rulers of Israel and amen idolatry ruled amen in the streets of Israel but yet he prayed and note with me also when he prayed at this moment he prayed he was the only one praying Israel didn't come up and say hey there wasn't one man that stepped up and said, Elijah, I'm going to help you pray. Elijah, I'm going to stand beside you while you pray and see when God, see if God will answer your prayer. I want to tell you, this was a man, and James said he was a man of like passions, but he prayed. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be some times that we're all alone, but you just remember Hey man, fire is looking for a place to fall. I said the fire of the Lord is not just going to fall regularly, but it's going to fall because God has directed that there's something that has pulled the fire of the Lord down. You know what it is? It's praying. It's prayer. It's the prayers of God's people. They're going to direct the fire from heaven. And my friend, it fell on an altar that a praying man built. Oh, God, help me today. The altars of a praying people are going to track the fire of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I beg of you, please don't quit praying. Hallelujah. I'm trying 
Amen. If I can say it, I'm trying to spark. Amen. An interest in your heart. I'm trying to get you to rekindle the desire and the want to to pray. Hallelujah. We need our prayer rooms. Amen. Live up by people that are praying. Hallelujah. We need our folks. Amen. That when the service is ending, we need folks that will fall on their face and begin to pray. Hallelujah. We don't need to take longer time to take a prayer request than it does to pray over the request. Hallelujah. How long has it been since you talked with the master? How long has you been since you failed into a spirit of prayer and you talked in tongues and you prayed in tongues and you sung in tongues and you worshiped? Now, that's all Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Just because it's not frequently practiced does not mean it ain't in the scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to find a place at your home to pray and seek God. If you can't make it to this church, you need to pray at home. Good preaching. I'll never forget this. And you may you may thank you, but I had a man tell me he was of the Trinitarian Pentecostal persuasion. He went to one of these local churches years ago. And he said, we needed some work done on the church. And I'd make an appointment with this man at the church. And he said, this old boy evidently was being claimed to be a Christian. And we, we looked, talked, and so we needed to meet another man at his house. He said, this old gentleman was a faithful member of this church, and so we arrived at his house to discuss the issue, and so we knocked, he went home, and he said, let's walk around to the old man's barn, see if he's down there. And he said, I got to walking, and we got, we was talking, and we got, all of a sudden we got quiet. And he said, out of that barn, that old man was praying. He said, man, he was sending them up to heaven. He said, that old boy stopped, and he said, I'll just let you go on and talk to him. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that a long time. Amen, somebody. It was said on the old preacher I knew many years ago that he would walk behind his house and there had been a tree had failed and it became his prayer altar and he had sat and knelt and placed his hands on that altar until he wore the bark of praying, seeking God. You could count at 10 o'clock in the morning Oh, sister, live just up the road, maybe, maybe a quarter of a mile from my grandparents. I knew her well, but this was in the depression at 10 o'clock. She shut everything down. It made no difference what was going on. She walked down below her house to just a little dried up branch many times. And you could hear she had, she had a voice and lungs that sound like a horn. So you could hear her praying. And she was talking to God. Oh, God, help us to understand. And this is what poses me that when I look back there and look here, amen, we're living at the end time and we're living in dangerous times, perilous times. But it seems it's hard to get people to pray, to covenant, to pray, to say we're going to come together and pray. Hallelujah. And I understand there's things that, hey man, the man's time of us, but I'm going to tell you, we need more people involved in praying. I'm not taking away from involvement in other activities of the church. It's my desire to get 100%. Hey man, but I'm probably not going to get it because of human nature. But I'm still going to strive and I'm still going to preach. Some advisor asked Ronald Reagan when he was president. He said, Mr. Reagan, why is it 
that you seem to be excited, amen, when there's certain issues that you have presented and you only get just a certain amount of things done. He said, he said, he told that guy, called him by name. He said, you know, he said, I'm glad that we can get 80%. If I can get 80% of the things done that I have declared, I'll be satisfied. I want to tell you, I'm looking for folks to get involved. Hallelujah. Where two or three or three has touching any one thing. Oh, my God. If he did a promise to three people, how much if 30 people are going to do, sister? Amen. How much if 50 people are going to do when they get united in prayer? They begin to pray. Begin to seek God. Hallelujah. The national and spiritual awakenings that happens in the 1700s and the 1800s in America, it started because of men praying. Men that did not know Acts 238, but they knew that prayer can connect them with the spirit world. Hey, I want to tell you, you and I know the truth. You and I have been baptized in his name and with his spirit. How much more can we do if we would pray? How much more fire would fall if you and I would pray? Because fire is going to be directed to prayer. He prayed. He prayed by himself. And he got the fire to fall. Amen. You can read on. The Bible said that when that fire fell, that Israel hit their face. And they said, the Lord, he is God. Any doubt that was in their minds evaporated because the fire fell. And the fire came to one altar of one praying man. Right. Hallelujah. I am persuaded, ladies and gentlemen, that apostolic faith assembly, amen. Some say, why do you always referring to the name? Why do you say church? It's because church is a broad term that I'm fear that us here will think about out there, this other church, that other church oh, around brother. the world. I'm oh, directing Lord. apostolic. When I say the name of this church, I'm bringing you back right here right. to amen. this place, to this lot, to oh, this place amen. of ground, to amen. these people, to yeah. you. Right. I'm trying to get you to wake up and realize amen. that if apostolic Apostolic Faith Assembly will pray. Hallelujah. The fire is going to fall yes. right here yes. and in your life yes. and in your family. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want you to look around and realize there's other sisters and brothers, family members that have come. That does not dis appoint me that does not get me in the mully grubs but that makes me excited because I know the Bible said and I refer to you to Cornelius again that Peter looked at the Jews and said this thing I have seen because I've had a vision and I've seen and hear these folks speak in tongues that God is no respect of person and that's what you need to realize if they come in my children, my family members are going to come in. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know what's happening? We get disappointed and quit praying for them. We're going to pray for somebody else. Come on, brother. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong praying for somebody else. But you need to keep praying. Keep believing. David had committed sin by numbering the children of Israel when his own men, Joab himself, Asked him, said, don't do that. Don't you know God's well able? He's, he's blessed. He has blessed Israel so much. But he went ahead and done it anyhow because the Bible said in the first verse of, I believe, chapter 21 of 1 Chronicles, that, the Lord, that Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. The provoking David to number Israel was a very sign of disbelief distrust, what sure God could take care of them. So he went to number. God said, hey, there's three things you can look forward. You pick one. 
David said, I fall on the mercies of God. When it was all said and done, the angel of the Lord stopped at Oran. When David came to Oran, he said, Oran, I want to buy. Oran said, I'll give it. No, he said, I'm not going to offer anything to God that's going to cost me a price. So he bought or he gave to Oran for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And called, everybody say called. Called, called on the Lord. You know what? He, the Lord, answered him, David, from heaven by fire. Everybody say fire. Fire, fire upon the altar of the burnt offerings. The fire failed, not only because a man called, but this offering, this place, cost a man a price. There's not enough folks I'm persuaded that wants to pay the price. Therefore, the fire doesn't fall. We need folks that's willing to go that other mile that Jesus said if they compel to go one, go two. If they want your coat, give them your cloak. Yeah. In other words, go that other mile. Yeah. There's too many folks that don't want to pay the price, don't want to build, don't want to pray. I want to tell you something. Taking time to pray is going to cost. It's going to cost you something. Yeah. It's going to cost your flesh. Flesh does not want to pray. Right. Flesh does not want to bend its will and talk to God. Our mind don't want to pray. Amen. Our mind. How many times you said, I'm going to pray and start to pray and there's thousands of things that comes in your mind. I need to do this. I need to do that. I, God, I forgot all about that. I don't know how many countless times I went to prayer and I began, I'm telling you, there was things that come out of the closet I need to do that I didn't even think was there. <laughs> Yeah. I'm amazed, Brother Isaac, just how many things I should be doing. Yeah. And I've got to wrestle, and I've got to fight. I've got to pay that cost. It's just got to be undone. Because I've got to stay focused that, you see, praying and prayer is an eternal issue. Amen. Yeah. It builds things in the spirit world. Why those things that comes in my mind are building worldly temples and fulfilling fleshly desires. But I've got to realize as Jesus did not my will, but thou will be done. I've got to pray to fulfill the will of God and the purpose of God in my life today. Oh, God, help us to understand here it was that David paid this 600 shackles of gold. He paid it. He waited out to the man. When the man was willing to give it to him. But David said that's not how the fire is going to come. That's not the place the fire is going to come. Hey man, it's going to come when people are willing to pay the price. Buy the truth and sell it. This fire failed. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's something profound. This, this prayer, it attracts the power and the fire of God. In Acts 1.14, the Bible said these all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. The whole house of Joseph, amen, was there except maybe Joseph. And they were there with a hundred and plus with them. And so they were praying and seeking God. And you will find that the Bible said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared up of them clothing tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The fire failed. Amen. It wasn't because it was an upper room, but it was because, uh, amen, that, that, that prayer.
prayer meeting that was taking place for approximately 10 days, it drew the attention of the fire. The fire failed when people, amen, spent some time. Don't you think 120 people, amen, had things to do? Yeah, but pastor, they wasn't in a time like we are. Yeah, but yet... They were busy. They no doubt had families to take care of. They no doubt had occupations and jobs and situations and crises that came, but yet they spent that time because God, the Lord himself, had promised, amen, you go and tarry and be endued with power from upon high. Hallelujah. Thank God today. Hallelujah. There's prayer. I'm sure out of 120, they were not all zombies and praying just alike, kneeling at the same time. I'm sure some was standing while others was laying. I'm sure some was crying while others rejoiced. I'm sure others, amen, just meditated while others screamed at the top of their lungs. God, give us that power. Give us the inheritance of the Heavenly Father. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but I want to tell you, on that day of Pentecost, when it fully come, when it fully dawn, I want to tell you, that wind fell. Amen. It filled the house. And suddenly, I don't know if one started or all started at the same time, but I do know that it appeared like clothing tongues of fire set up on each of them. 120 received see the Holy Ghost. Why was that fire directed? Because people were praying. Yes. They were seeking God. Yes. And they were in tandem, if you please. They were praying for one thing only. And that was the promise of the Father. Amen. 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 Everybody, everybody wants this fire. Everybody loves this fire. It, it, it attracts people. Fire attracts people. Amen. It attracts folks. You hate to see it. People comes out. We need some folks to realize. Amen. There's something great about it. And this fire that fell on the day of Pentecost, it still burns today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, right. That's the great part. That's the great phenomenon about the Holy Ghost. It has not quenched. It has not stopped. Amen. Amen. We have had in the last few years out west, including this by summer, we have had many, many fires that have burned. Didn't seem like it was ever going to get a handle, but they eventually did. There have been volcanoes that have erupted and sending hot fire, molten and lava down the hillside, taking and stripping, amen, the vegetation, the trees, you name it, burn it to a cinder. But they finally, finally cooled down. But I want to tell you this fire of God that falls, it has not it has not cooled down after 2,000 plus years. It's still alive in people's heart, and they're still getting it. But you know who gets it? Those that pray. Those that say, Lord, I need to be baptized with your spirit. It falls on them. For John said, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he that cometh after me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlatch, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the only baptizer of this spirit and fire that I'm talking about. I do not want to cross swords, but when folks are trying to teach you to speak in another tongue, that's not God. That's not the, you're not the baptizer. The spirit gives utterance. The spirit Yes. Good, brother. Amen. He's, they're gone now, but some of you remember them. The Garrett's, I never forget him telling me about experience. The second time in a Pentecostal church, the Spirit got a hold of him. He got up out of that, Sister Paula, you probably heard it, walked up to the front, never knelt, 
raised his hands and when he opened his mouth, he was praying in the spirit. He was praying himself when he walked up here. He opened his mouth and began automatically speaking in other tongues. He said, it got a hold of me. He said, man, it shook me. It scared me for a moment. I could not control it. He said, I looked over to the pastor and I began to point to my mouth, my tongue. He said, I couldn't control. He come over there and said, what, what do you need? He finally, he he said, I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I don't have control of my vocal system. I, he said, I'm, and I begin to speak in tongues again. Hallelujah. He is a, he is a doctor of many fact. Amen. That men have preached and the Holy Ghost get on him and they preach in tongues. And somebody in the audience would hear those preachers preach in another tongue and it would be their native tongue. Oh, thank God. God today. Oh God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. brother and sister. Hallelujah. I just heard this. They got a uh, CD of a man. He worked at a hospital. Begin to speak in tongues. Amen. This doctor, he began to listen to him. He was so upset. It's a, it's a story to all this, but I'm trying to condense it. He thought, surely this guy's going to fire me. He said, that doctor went seven Seven days, I never spoke a word. And the seven days, the gentleman said, I'm looking to get fired. Just in a moment, finally the doctor, he got to seven days. The doctor was going around to associates to this man and said, uh, where did that guy go and learn the Indian language? He didn't go. Oh, yeah, he had to go to school. No, he didn't go. Finally, he just broke down and said, where did you learn the language? He said, doctor, I didn't learn that language. I didn't learn it. My, my, my. I didn't learn it. He said, he said, that's the most fluent tongue of my native village I was raised in that I've heard since I've come to America. Mm -hmm. Finally, the guy got bold enough and said, well, what was it? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> and he began to explain to him what this man told him. And it was like this. They were doing... They had done two colonotomy on this gentleman. One said cancer, went back and done another. The man had a complete clarity yeah. of his colon. Yeah. And, he, and this was what the Pentecost spoke in tongues to the doctor. And this is what he said. I have took out the old and I put in the new. The doctor had told them, he said, I want a picture taken when he was doing the colonoscopy the second time. He'd done one the first time. He'd done a picture the second time and said, I want a picture because they'll never believe that this man's clear and clean. But you see, people praying. People praying. Yes. Say that. People, people praying. praying. People praying. People, not angels, not angels, not, not, not prophets, not apostles only, not preachers and pastors, people, people praying. A hundred and twenty praying. There was just only a few of them. What, 13, 15 at the max was ever named. So if it was 15, there's approximately 105 never named that was there. People praying. People praying. People praying. But I will submit to you, Paul says in his writings, there was approximately 500 that saw the resurrected Christ. But when the hundred, but the day of Pentecost came, there was a hundred and twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So more happened to three hundred and eighty. Mm -hmm. But a hundred and twenty was enough. You know why? They were praying. Yes. Yes. Praying. Amen. Praying. Amen. Praying. Amen. Praying. Amen. praying. Amen. I want to tell you, you can pray. You can pray healing, and you can pray your children. And your family members <laughs> out of darkness. Out of, you can pray your spouse out of darkness into light. 
You can pray them out of sin. You can pray them out of addictions. Yes, sir. We've got a God that can break the powers of addictions and habits. You can pray your children's marriages together. You can pray for your grandchildren and your whoever. You can pray for them. Because the fire falls when people pray. And do you know, as I close, do you know who worked the altar? You know who put the fire on the altar? It was the priest that cleaned it out. It was the priest that put the fire. Because they had to take the fire off the altar to clean the altar out. And they put the wood and they took the fire that they had safeguarded and put it back in the altar. I want to tell you, you've got to keep it flowing. You've got to keep it moving if you're going to keep it alive. As, as that lightning rod stands elevated, I want to tell you, prayer needs to be an elevated issue yes, yes, yes. in our life. Good. Could we stand and let's love Jesus a moment? Let's pray, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.